Roosevelt comes in and he's looking at all the causes of the depression. Which one of those, the stock market or banks, would really help our economy go up if he were to fix it? Banks. And so if y'all look on our first thing on our, on our chart, he does a bank holiday. What he's going to do, and you have to know this for the test because I think it's one of the test questions, what was his first action in office? Is he closed the banks? Why would he close the banks? What was the issue with the banks? They didn't have any money and everybody was running to the bank to get their money and it was causing the banks to go out of business. So, this is recovery for your R. All right, it is recovery. That means what is he trying to do? Get us out of the... Okay, and there's a reason. If he closes the banks according to this app, he's gonna close them from March 6th to March 10th, and what he's gonna do, and this is what the second part is. Do y'all see all the way down at the end? What did the program do? This program, it sent in investigators to open sound safe banks. Hmm. If I'm only opening safe banks, what is he hoping people would do? Go put their money in there. Why is it important to put money in a bank? Because banks do what with money? Loan it, Loan it out to businesses and businesses hire people and they pay people money. And if people get money, they're going to demand goods. And what would it do to our economy? Boost it. So this is why he looks at the banks. If I open up safe banks, banks can make business loans. Businesses can get money. They could hire people. People could have a demand for stuff that it will recover our economy. The other thing he's doing is he, he's keeping the unfit or kept closed. So now, do people want to put their money in the banks? Yes, come on, okay? So, is he trying to fix the depression? But can it be one thing? No, he's gonna have to do several different things. So did you get the first one? It's recovery. So who does this help? That's the middle one. Who does this app? Who? The economy, but let's give specifics. Banks and then the people, right? So let's put banks and the people. Why would it help the banks? People now what? Go to them, trust them. So our next thing on here is the emergency banking app, and I'm gonna tell you the bank holiday and the banking app are the same, right? So you don't have to rewrite anything. Yes. What? No, it was only temporarily, okay? So if our economy were ever to happen again like that, the president does have the authority to go into the banking system and figure out what is going on. But what we have is, and you'll eventually learn this in macroeconomics, is that we have the Fed, the Federal Reserves, that is actually supposed to go into the banks and make sure that they're safe. But our Fed during the 1920s was laissez-faire, so they weren't regulating them. So FDR is going in and saying, no, I'm going to use that Fed. I'm going to regulate the banks to make sure that they're safe. Okay? And so that's why we haven't had something as this catastrophic. When I get into the 1980s, I'm going to talk about another bank catastrophe. But it's not with banks. It's done with credit unions that are issues. Okay, so when we get to the 1980s, I'll talk about that. So fireside chats. That's the third one, right? These fireside chats, Roosevelt, it's relief, recovery, and reform. Okay, so it's, I would put R, 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 not that you're pirates, but it's the three R's. Okay, what this fireside chats, what he did is millions of Americans tuned in to their radios to hear his assurance on his policies. That's what it is. They we were hearing his assurance on his policies. Also, he was going out and explaining his policies. What do you think he was telling about the people, about the banks? They're safe. You could trust them. And by telling them that, that would make people go do what? Put the money in the banks so the banks can loan the money to who? Business. A so business could pay who? Workers so they could create demand. Yes, Braden. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what I did. Oh, I have a pocket. That was just a crappy line. I need to re-record. Okay, so his most profound assurance was pivotal in explaining the reopening of the banks, which we just discussed. 
after the bank holiday. He stated it was now safer to keep your money in the reopened bank than under your mattress. Because under your mattress, can a business get it? No, does it impact our economy? So confidence will return with the reopened banks. And every time he does a new act, he's going to get out on the radio and explain it. So he tells people how to act. So if you act this way, what is it going to fix? The economy, the depression, it will pull us out. And really, a lot of his acts will try to help the economy, but it isn't until we enter World War II that our depression is over. Okay, so the Beer, Wine, and Revenue Act, this is relief. I don't know why it's relief. Maybe because we're creating jobs, right, and giving relief to people to engage in their vice. Yes. The people. Hey, come on. I'm doing this whole thing for you. I don't know if I need a tap dance. I can. Yes. Banks too. It's everyone. The people of the banks. Okay. So this one, the Beer and Wine Revenue Act. It's Relief Recovery Reform. RRR. So it legalized. This is what it did. It legalized light wine and beer with an alcoholic content presumably not intoxicating of 3.2%. All right, so, wait, what are we violating? And so what he did is, the reason why he's legalizing this is to levy a tax of $5. So the government gets what? Five bucks. To do what? To help. to help the economy, spend, create jobs. So we're violating the 18th Amendment here. So eventually, this is going to be the precursor to what new amendment? 21st. And the scrunchal drives are going to be saying that this is the breakdown of law and order. How dare Roosevelt do this? He's 3.2% of an American. <laughs> if you could be a percentage, you'd be 3.2%. And eventually, this will be repealed by the 21st Amendment. So who do you think this helps? The government raise revenue. Who else does it help? The people who want to drink. The people who get jobs, right? All of a sudden, Anheuser-Busch comes in. So do you all know the difference between a dry uh, county and a wet county? Ellis County, what do you think we're our dry or wet? Dry. We are because we don't sell anything above the content of 3.2%. We'll sell beer, we'll sell like wines and spirits. But any time that you want to get something that's more than that alcoholic contact, you have to go to another county. So do you all realize if you go to Bear Creek, that's where you can get it because that's Dallas? Or if you go to Alma or Garrett, okay? if you go um, down 67 on Venus, past Venus, you could get to one. Again, it's everything else that's another county because Ellis County is a dry county because we adhere to the 3.2% here. We're a 3.2% county. Just in case you wanted to have some discourse of people at the local bar, you, you can't go get your stuff, so you're here because Ellis County is a 3.2% county. Okay. C, C, C. So, you're probably going to need to know this for the test. That is the most popular of the New Deal alphabet agencies, but that's not what it did. But just FYI, it's the most popular. Um, we are going to see that this is going to provide employment it is going to provide employment in fresh air government camps for about three million uniformed young men many of whom might have otherwise been driven to desperation and, and criminal habits their work was useful they did reforestation what event do we need to reforest after it's big huge very dustful they do some firefighting flood control and swamp drainage these guys are going out there making $30 a month, but they only get $5 because the rest of the money is sent back home to their family because their ma and their pa and their little brothers and sisters, would they be able to work? Mm -hmm. This is why the CCC is popular because it made sure that people at home got money for their son working. I don't know it. Yes, go ahead. Maybe it was also popular because when people took the pictures, the men were shirtless. I don't know. But m most of the reason why it was popular was because of that payment that went home. Mm -hmm. It helps the people who get the jobs, right? 
but does it also help their family? Why does it help their family? They get, they send the money back home to them. So it's relief because they get, oh gosh, where's relief on there? I screwed up on the PowerPoint. It should have relief recovery reform, sorry. Because is there jobs coming? It's, it should be all three R's. Okay, does it look like he's doing a lot? Mm -hmm. And so every single president is going to be based, they're going to compare him to Roosevelt. Because Roosevelt, within his first 100 days, do you all see that darker box? If you go over to the second side, that's everything he does within the first 100 days. Wow, did he do a lot. And so most presidents, they're, after their first 100 days, they're gonna look at how much legislation they've done. No one has ever done as much as FDR, okay? No one has ever done as much as FDR, so every president will be compared to them. Okay, so let's look at the next one. The next one is the Federal Relief Act. It's recovery and reform. So this is an agency that grants it about three million billion to states for direct dole payments for wages on works projects. Y'all know what works projects are? They're building roads. They're building bridges. They're building buildings. They're building um, parks. Those are works projects. Does Waxahachie have some works projects going on? Mm -hmm. Too many. They have the amphitheater. Do y'all see at the parks they ripped up all the, the, uh, the sidewalks in the parks for the trails? And it's like, now you can't go walk at the park, okay? But they're doing a works project, okay? So are we trying to create jobs here? So what am I missing? Relief. And it even says relief right there. Lord, like, I'm sorry. It's all three of them. Because I just have talked about jobs, and it says the federal emergency. I'm sorry, this is like... I got like no sleep last night. My baby just got shots and he's just like, oh, oh, they hurt, they hurt. And so I stayed up all night. It's gonna help everybody, the people. This next one is the Agricultural and Adjustment Act. So hmm, who do you think it helps? Farmers. Farmers. And it made millions of dollars available to help farmers to help farmers meet their mortgages. Why would it be important that a farmer would be able to pay his mortgage? They pay back the bank. So they can pay back the bank and they can still farm. Because if they lose their farm, what happens to farm production? It goes down and what happens to price? It goes up. But are people going to criticize this? Yeah, we're helping farmers pay their mortgages while people are losing their houses and living in what? Which are called what? Shanty towns, Hoovervilles. So we're not going to make everybody happy with the New Deal. There will be critics like Huey Long and Huey Long 2.0, because I screwed up that question too. Okay, is everybody good with this one? Should I have printed out the PowerPoint? Or can we not print out PowerPoint anymore? It's only in relief and recovery, right? Yes. This helps the farmers. Yes. So. Okay. Can I go to the next one? I'll be very literal. We'll go R and then I'll read the act and then we'll come back and talk about who it helps. Let's look at the next one the Tennessee River Valley Authority. Um, I forgot the river in there. It's relief, recovery, and reform. The federal government owned much of the river area around the Tennessee River Valley, and it was badly eroded. Is that good when a, a river is eroded? No. We're going to see it contained 2.5 million of the most poverty-stricken people in America. So did anybody care about this area? Did anybody want to invest in this area? And so the government will pay to dam up the river. So they're going to dam up the river, which sounds really bad, and they're going to develop hydroelectrical power. I know I have potential there, but I'm just going to put power there. Why is that really important? Hydroelectrical power. You don't spend money on electricity. On electricity, but now do you think these people have electricity? Mm -hmm. 
It's the poorest area in America. And all of a sudden, they're electrified, both electrical and in personality. Okay, so the area can now provide thousands of people with jobs. They're poverty stricken. Are they happy now? Why? They have jobs. And now they have cheap electrical power. But does that help me in Texas? No. Do I get cheap electrical power? No. Do I get a job? So who does this help? People living in the Tennessee River Valley. And many people said this is creeping socialism, that the government is providing cheap electricity. They own the government production. So are people being critical of his stuff? Tennessee Valley area, yes. The next one is the Federal Securities Act, and this is reform. The Federal Security, is that the next one? All right. It required promoters to transmit to investors sworn information regarding the soundness of their stock and bond. So basically, someone who's selling a stock or selling a bond, can they lie about it or can they not lie about it? They have to give the truth about the stock. Because people used to stock water just like people used to cattle water. So y'all know the cattle before they used to go get weighted, what would they give them? Water. Salt, so that they would drink more water and so what would happen to their weight? It would go up and so they would get more. But was that cattle really worth that? And that's the same thing that people were doing in the stock market. They were saying that their business was worth more so the value of their stock went up, but was it really worth that? No. So, this Federal Security Act is reform. We know that they have to have truth about their stock and their bond. Who does this help? Common. Not the common man, because not everybody. Big Investors buying in the stock um. market. probably very quiet when the videos are just playing, right? Because I kept on like asking questions and I'd have to re-record. I was like, can't ask a question. They're not going to talk back to me. Mm -hmm. Hey, can I go to, huh? Can I go to the next one now? All right. The next one is the Homeowners Loan Corporation. It's relief and recovery. It was designed to refinance mortgages on non-farm homes. Do y'all know what it means to refinance? Okay, you go to the bank, you originally get a loan for 20%. Is that really high? Now you can refinance for a lower interest rate, like 2%, 3%. Would you want to do that? Yes, because you're paying the bank less money. So it's helping people on non-farm homes. Because what, have people lost their homes? Because they're living where? In the shanty towns of Hooverville, it ultimately assisted about a million badly pinched households. This agency not only bailed out mortgage holding banks, but it also bolted political loyalties and relieved the middle class homeowners securely to the Democratic Party. So who does this help out? Middle class homeowners, because they're able to renegotiate their home loan. Go ask for your parents, would they like to refinance at a lower interest rate? And they're gonna tell you yes because that means they get more money in their pocket unless they're paying for their loan. Whoa, has he done a lot? And we're not even to the end of the 100 days. The next one is the National Industrial Recovery Act. Hmm, so it should also be recovery. So this one's relief, reform, and recovery. The first one we're gonna do, oh, it even tells you who it's helping. It was done to help industry, labor, and the unemployed. Here's who it's helping. And I'm gonna explain this one out. Let me read it and then explain it to y'all. So don't try to do the action. Let me read this one and explain it what it's doing. 
So what it did, it says individual industries, over 200 in all, were to work out codes of fair competition, which hours of labor would be reduced so that employment could be spread over more people. That does not make sense to you, right? These people are employed in the Great Depression. They have a job. Y'all don't have a job. Are y'all happy? No. Are they happy? Yes. They get 40 hours a week and they get a minimum wage. Yes. They're happy. Y'all are what? No. So what the government does, they says, okay, instead of y'all working 40 hours a week, we're going to make y'all work 20. Are y'all upset now? But they're going to say, we're going to raise your pay so that the 20 equals the 40 hours in pay. Are y'all happy now? Yeah. Why are y'all happy on this end? You work less for the same amount of money. Guess what they're going to do with those 20 hours? Yes. They're going to come to y'all, and y'all are going to get paid the same amount. And are y'all happy now? Oh, yeah. Why are y'all happy? Y'all yeah. have a job. Are they still happy over here? Yes. Why are they still happy? Work for less in the same pay. Ah, do y'all get this fair, fair competition? Which hours of labor would be reduced? Did I reduce their hours? That employment could be spread over more people. Did I spread it over more people? Do y'all now get that sentence? That's what you write down for the action. Yay, so we're making people happier during the Depression. Uh, the national, that's the first one. And the next one just talks about a ceiling being placed on the maximum hours of labor, which was 20. And they put a floor. They make a minimum wage. Whoa, wait. Do we have that today, a minimum wage? Mm -hmm. And do we have a max amount of hours that y'all could work? Yeah. This comes out from this act. Okay. Workers were formally guaranteed the right to organize so they could have labor unions. Okay, so who is this going to help? Hmm. The people, right? It helps industry because they get people in there and it helps the unemployed. So we already have that in there of all the people who are being helped. So now our unemployed, are they really happy now? And then those people over there who had jobs, why are they happy? You don't have to work as much. You work half the time. How, would you, how many of you would like that? Work half the time and still get paid the same amount? You would totally jump onto that. So is this going to be popular? Yes. And he's solving the issues of the depression by spreading out the hours amongst more people. Did that make sense when I did it with y'all now? That sentence now is conducive to your learning. Great. The next one on here is the public works one, right? Okay, can I go on to the next one yet? All right. This one... It's going to give $4 billion on some 34,000 projects, which included. So $4 billion is going to be spent on buildings, highways, and parkways. So have you ever seen, like, in Dallas, there's those great avenues that are really nice? Mm -hmm. And then we have parks and highway bridges. All of that will be spent on this. Some is going to be spent on the Coley Dam, uh, which is actually the largest structure ever erected that is equivalent to the Great Wall of China. That's how big this dam is. We're going to see um, we're going to see that it created electrical power in this area greater than what the Tennessee River Valley is. So who is this helping? We're creating jobs for the unemployed, right? But just with buildings, highways, and parkways. That was easy to fill out on that one. Okay, the next one. This one is super important to y'all. It is the Glass-Steagall Banking Reform Act. This measure provided for the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, which so just happened to have my line, insured individual deposits up to $5,000. Why would people be so excited about the government insuring your bank accounts? What has happened to people's bank accounts in the 20s? and the 30s. Bank runs, Did, was there money there? No. no, and so now the government says if your bank is a part of the FDIC, the most four important letters you should see on your bank, your money is what? Insured. Insured. So today sometime go look that up. 
If your bank is not FDIC insured or CDC, CDIC insured, take your money out of that bank. Yes, Jacob. So like, is, was that made because um, when money was in the banks, there were basically like other people's money that they deposited? And, okay. They loaned out, yes. So next year when you go into macroeconomics, this is called the reserve requirement and the banks can loan out a portion of what they get from the deposit and they were lending out too much. And eventually this is how they make money. They make money without depending on gold. But now this is saying, Jacob, you can put as much money in there and the government's gonna protect it up to $5,000. So if you're like a big baller and you have $25,000, you should have five different accounts up to $5,000 because that would be protected. Today it's up to $100,000. So when you're a rich, whatever you're gonna be, make sure if you go over 100,001, you open up a new bank account for that $1. Okay? Okay, because they only insure, insure it to that ceiling. Yeah. Okay. Because like it's a bank. If you have a hundred and if you have two hundred thousand in an account, is that smart? No. No. Nope. Take that hundred thousand, put it in another account, so it's insured. But why is the government having to do this? Because of what happened, the banks made loans to people who invested in what? And so now y'all are probably all gonna look today. Am I FDIC insured? I, I do Bank of America, Wells Fargo's bank insured is FDIC. I think CNB is CDIC, okay? So just go look those up and make sure your bank account, if you're investing in Pronto Bank that is not insured by this, please take your money out today and go invest in appropriate bank. The next one, oh wow, we just got to the end of the first 100 days and he's looked at the banks, he's looked at the stock market and he's looked at creating jobs. Has he done way more than Hoover? In four years, he did way more than Hoover. But our next one is the Civilian Works uh, Administration. It is relief and recovery. It was designed to provide purely to provide purely temporary jobs in the cruel winter. So here it is. It's to provide temporary jobs during the cruel winter emergency because usually during the winter time most people lose their jobs and so on useful projects so many thousand employees were um, leafing right leafing is that a useful job if you have too much leaves in a forest that could lead to a what so it is useful right but they were saying some of those leaf rakers were they fast or were they slow and they were criticizing it, saying, look, we're paying people to boondoggle. I don't know, I don't use that term, but that's what the book used. And this was kind of like just paying people just to pay people. Yeah. And were they doing much? Mm -hmm. So do you think people are gonna become critical of FDR? That we're moving away from capitalism and moving towards what? Socialism. Oh my gosh, is FDR a socialist? Okay. The next one, the Securities and Exchange Commission. There it is, reform. It was designed as a watchdog and administration agency on the stock market. Why do we need to watch our stock market? What has gone so crazy on the stock market? What were people doing about the stocks? They were lying about their value, their, their safety. And so the Securities and Exchange Commission is gonna investigate all these businesses y'all know of a person named Martha Stewart? Yes. Martha Stewart so just happened to sell her stocks prior to the fall of the value of her stock. So she sold it for a lot of money and the next person did they get a lot of worth out of it. So the Securities and Exchange Commission investigated her and they realized she was inside trading. And guess where Martha went for a couple of months? jail because the Securities and Exchange Commission. Okay, are they trying to solve one of our problems with the depression? Yes, the stock market. And so henceforth the stock market is to operate as a trading market than a gambling casino, which we saw in the reading that people were trying to make money off the stock market. So Enron eventually when I get to 2000, we'll talk about this and they did some insider trading. Okay, is Roosevelt handing handling the problems of the depression. 
Yes, but many people are saying that he's teetering on the side of what government type? Socialism. The stock market. Investors in the stock market. The next one is the Indian Reorganization Act and its reform. How have we treated our Native Americans prior to this time period? Poorly. They had titles to their lands. Did we adhere to them? No, we made them re-sign and move west, right? And then even then, we did the Dawes Act and we asked them to act how? Like Americans, white. And then we took their kids, right? We were trying to kill the Indian, save the man. But now this Indian Act is going to encourage it's going to encourage tribes to establish local self-government and to preserve their native crafts and traditions. Whoa, what are we asking Native Americans to be now? Be Indian. Oh my gosh, they've been waiting for this for a very long time. This is reform. Because every single time we dealt with the Native Americans, well, who have we always asked them to act like? White man. White man. And now we're saying, sorry, sorry for all that stuff that happened. Sorry for Andrew Jackson. But please go back to your ways. This is America's apology to what we've done to Native Americans. So who does this help? Okay, and this is reform because God, God, we've really messed up. We're fixing a problem. Was this really a depression problem? No, this is a social justice problem right here. Hooray for Roosevelt. Oh yeah. Act, we just did this one. The next one we're going to look at is something important to y'all in the future. Um, this is the National um, the National Housing Act, which creates the Fed FHA, the Federal Housing Authority. This allowed for the building industry. Oh, I don't even need a. <laughs> it's just worked out. Okay, that's what the action is. It allowed the building industry to be stimulated by making loans to households for improving their dwellings or for completing new ones. Because think about this, I take out a loan, I buy a house, does that employ a lot of people? Yes. Yeah, the cement layer, the person who puts up the wall, the insulation, the roof, I don't know how, what else to build a house with, windows, electrician, electrician plumbing. plumbing, not yet 1950s. We're suffering till then. But is this going to stimulate my economy? Yes. And so eventually, y'all will never be able to buy a house straight up, put $300,000 down. So banks usually require that you put a percentage down. Most banks require 20%. So if you think about a $300,000 home, you're putting $60,000 down. Whoa. FHA does something for first time home buyers, which eventually one day will you be that? They say that you could put 3% down, up to 10%, and you could get a loan through them. Is this organization going to help you? Yes. Who does this organization help at this time? New home buyers and home buyers who need to do what? Buy a house. Improve their dwelling or buy their house. So it helps homeowners. And this organization will outlive Roosevelt, because he dies in 44, but it's, it's still here today. So if you ever have to buy a home and you don't, you don't have that 20% down, you go get yourself an FHA loan and you could be rocking in your new digs. <laughs> okay. You want me to talk and baby talk? I could talk and baby talk too. I'm fluent in that. Okay, this next one is the Fraser Limp Car Farm Bankruptcy Act. This is not the answer. What it's doing is trying to be sympathetic to the people who are affected by the Dust Bowl, because what has happened to their farm? It's destroyed. And so what this 
did. It, it, it sus made a suspension of mortgage foreclosures for five years. Because these guys, if they they have nothing to plant in their dust, right? So are they making money? So can they pay their mortgage? Yeah. So this one suspends it until five years. What they're hoping to happen? What are they hoping to happen to that land? It's, it's, been, refertilized. it's been refertilized that they could farm now and do what? eventually become productive member of society by producing food and they produce food and sell it and they could pay off their mortgage. mortgage. Okay, the Supreme Court's gonna look at this and say it's unconstitutional. Gosh, darn it, they're saying, Roosevelt, you're acting too what? Socialistic. And they're gonna say, it's okay if you give a grace period for three years. Today, when the government shut down in January, did businesses come out and do some suspensions of payments for a while yes and it's this act that leads to what we are doing today when things go awry who do you think this helps people who what people affected by the dust bowl Okay, so now we're on the second New Deal. So the, what that means, what has happened to his first term? It was great. He's done a lot, and now he's been what? Re-elected. So now we get the second New Deal, and it starts off with the Resettlement Administration. It is relief and recovery. And what this administration is charged with is the they're charged with the task of removing near farmless farmers to better land. So they're removing near farmless farmers to better land. So where do you think these people were? In the Dust Bowl above Texas and parts of Texas are going to be involved in this. And the other task is they're going to plant 2 million trees in Burr Prairies. As windbreakers because y'all know that not like to cover y'all know your windbreaker protects you from the wind right well trees protect the ground from getting loose because their roots are down there right and it keeps the ground intact so that's why trees are important besides shade and oxygen. providing oxygen and providing paper that you get to write on okay. and just being cool for shade and being green I like trees. <laughs> <laughs> Except for Texas, where it's just brown. Because we're in the plains, there's not many trees. America. Okay. I feel like you're going to end up like moving to call it like California or something, like those like 300 year old red No, water. you know, yeah, but I've, I've been reading children's books. <laughs> trees, trees everywhere. Trees everywhere, yay, trees. Huh? It does help the farmers. It helps the farmers and us that bring oxygen. <laughs> we have these carbon-based life forms. Can I go to the next one? And the Martians. Okay, can I go to the next one? Yeah. Okay. The Works Progress Administration? Oh, this is Serenissimus. The objective was the employment of useful projects. This agency spent about $11 billion on thousands of public buildings, bridges, and hard surfaces, road, hard surfaced roads. Is it after inflation? How? Is no, this bad? is at the time. So this is a lot of money. It's like a couple hundred. Billion. And people are criticizing. Well, and this is what Trump's doing. He's trying to build a wall, right? And he wants so much money for it. But it's going to have economic ramifications. It's going to create jobs which is going to put money in people's pockets, which is going to stimulate our economy. But we can't afford it because we're about $21 trillion in debt. Uh, yeah. We're almost to 22 but it keeps on counting. Okay. Can um, we get to 50? Okay, so now, who does this help? Uh, the people. people who don't have jobs. Citizens. Most of y'all, when y'all will go to university, there's always going to be a building that will be by the, built by the WPA. Some of the dormitories on your college campuses will be built by the WPA. So 
here are just some examples and the WPA in Wyoming help control crickets because crickets are bad if they get near your farm. Okay. Um, they built monkey pens in Oklahoma City because apparently there was chaos with monkeys in Oklahoma City. Which um, They did the Federal Art Project. How many of y'all know Diego Rivera? The, Diego Rivera is going to do these massive murals in Chicago and in New York. And he does one in Rockefeller Center. That's really pretty. Okay. They're going to employ nearly 9 million po people. And many people are saying, well, the government's just paying people to work, right? but this is not a handout. One of the most incredible things this project does is, have you ever seen pictures of the Great Depression? Yes. It was done by the WPA. They took all the pictures of the Great Depression. When we hear stories about slavery, the WPA went and found people who were ex-slaves at this time and started taking the stories of what happened during slavery. So it's employing, is it employing a skilled person or an unskilled person? Skilled. skilled. And that was many people who are going without jobs in this time period. Let's try to do one more. The Wagner Act. Um, this created a powerful new National Labor's Board of Administration. Um, and what they're gonna do is assert the right to for labor to organize and collectively bargain. I guess that this is what you need. So labor unions, are they getting more power? If they could bargain for themselves with their employers. They could sit down saying, we need higher wages, let's bargain. We need less hours, let's bargain. Is this helping them or hurting them? Helping them. So who does this help? The business or the laborer? Labor. Labor. Maybe we could do Social Security, because y'all probably know about that one. We get out of 37, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try to do that one so that Grant only has the back page to do, and we can move fast tomorrow with our review clips. Mm -hmm. Laborers, yes. So. I know in Texas we don't have much labor unions, but this act, like if you're in California, Pennsylvania, New York, gives them bargaining power. All right, the next one, you probably know of Social Security because most of you get it taken out of your paycheck. All right, Social Security was created at this time. It was one of the most successful New Deal programs it gave unemployment insurance in old age pension. So for example, unemployment insurance means you lose your job. You could collect unemployment up until you find a new job. And this is something that happens to y'all that is taken out of your paycheck. So if Ms. Verdeen lost her job, I have been paid into so my unemployment that I could collect a paycheck until I find one. Remember when we had the recession just recently? People were collecting up to 18 months unemployment insurance. Also, the other thing is that y'all pay into this for your retirement, but I, I, I highly suggest you don't use this as your retirement because Social Security will go defunct really soon. They take a portion of your paycheck and it's put into an account for you. But our problem is, is that our baby boomer generation is a lot bigger than what the amount of money is in the fund. And so they're freaking out because what do they think is gonna happen to Social Security? It's not gonna be there for them. And so it provided a cushion in the future depressions. It provided security for the old age. So how many of your grandparents are collecting Social Security? Because a lot of them paid into it, okay? Y'all, are eventually gonna pay into it, right? Or you're paying into it right now. Do y'all think it's gonna be there? No. So y'all should invest in retirement accounts, such as a 401k or a 403b or a Roth IRA. Because right now, our government is facing issues. Also, the last thing, provisions were made for those who are blind, physically handicapped, delinquent children. That doesn't mean kids who get in trouble. This means children who have lost their what? Parents. Parents. Parents and other dependents. So if you're blind, you're handicapped, the government gives a social security check because can those people work? Yeah. And people who've lost their parents, 
they would have become orphans of the state. And so this is another benefit of Social Security. Huh? 